World of Wonder, or WOW, is a cutting-edge, independent, documentary television, film, and new media production company directed by two executive producers, Fenton Bailey. This thing that if you look at it and say, well, this is what this show is, it's this nutty bird lady in a big yellow hat looking like Big Bird trying to sing a song and she can't sing. You could never say that. You could never go out and directly... It but, seems but, to me that but, but things that always succeed. They always have to be like Trojan horses. They always have to have some other uh, thing about them that they're nominally or ostensibly yeah, about. Yeah. And then underneath it, they're really about something else. But you're right. giving everybody much more credit than they deserve. And Randy Barbato. First of all, like, network executives nine out of ten times don't know what the fuck is going to happen. They put something on and... You know, it's a hit or it isn't. And anyone who pretends they know is just, lying. other than people who work at World of Wonder, are just lying. This is where in Hollywood they currently produce 10 programs. With something always on the air in the US or UK, WOW is at the forefront of connecting television, film, and online platforms within a transmedia story of queer visibility set within popular culture. Queer visibility and multiculturalism inform WOW's depictions of sex, media, and celebrity. WOW's transmedia story is charged with subcultural capital and a liberatory ethos, a drag plasticity with identity, and a camp rereading of sexual norms fuels WOW's sensational sellability and political visibility on three media platforms. I define WOW's cultural convergence as a unity of historically connected and culturally embedded queer narratives. Drag is so important to our people. I mean, drag set our people free. So many people think that drag is just sort of like putting on a wig and it's just some funny thing for, for laughs. The reality is it's, you know, powerful political statement. Drag queens go out there and say, go ahead and judge me. I don't care. WOW's transmedia story of queer visibility begins in experience and interaction in the clubs and subcultural art scene of New York City in the 1980s. As DJs in the electro-pop band, The Fabulous Pop-Tarts, Bailey and Barbado were insiders to a gay media movement rising in Manhattan in the wake of Warhol's death. Like their friends, D-Light and PM Dawn, they were spiritual and utopian. This is a commercial they produced for Club USA in New York City. Hello, and welcome to USA, your pleasure destination. Failing to become pop music stars, Bailey and Barbado turned to managing and successfully introduced RuPaul, the first drag queen to popular American culture. The RuPaul show aired in 1996 and ran for over 100 episodes on VH1. This is the hottest booty in captivity. Hotter than a crack pipe on payday. From their experience in the club kids scene in the late 1980s and early 90s, they made their first acclaimed documentary, Party Monster, which premiered at Sundance in 1998. There is a place for you if you feel like you're a freak. If you've got a hunchback, you know, throw a little glitter on it, honey, and, and go out and dance and, you know, show the world that it's okay. You know, it's okay to have these weird thoughts in your head. It's about, like, just letting it go and just, you know, expressing yourself. And I think that that's a really positive message. These experiences in performance, gender bending, celebrity construction, and media play set the foundation for the production of over 200 documentary television series and films queerly dealing with sex, media, and celebrity. <laughs> 